Hi everybody, my name is Josiah, also known as Chilling Silence, and today I want to share with you what my top 10 reasons are as of February 2021, why I love Digibyte and why I am so excited about its future. Starting us off at number 10, Digibyte was a fairly launched blockchain. Digibyte itself is not an ICO. There is no founder's fee, there are no block rewards that go to any centralized entity, and despite it being pretty commonplace back in 2014 for a lot of huge pre-mines to take place, Digibyte had only a very small 0.5% pre-mine, of which all of that was given away and very well documented on the Bitcoin Talk forums. Half of that went to pay for a third-party developer for the first Android and iOS applications, the other half went straight to the community, specifically to encourage people to download and run a full node, as well as early mining pools, like a bit of an incentive to get them set up and running. None of this was kept by the founder. This is actually incredibly important because a lot of the startups that were occurring back in 2014 were running into problems with centralization and the likes from not being distributed on enough nodes. Not to mention there are actually still projects out there today that are not a complete blockchain, that are missing parts of the early blockchain. So it was actually very important that Digibyte took a small pre-mine and distributed it to the community in such a way. Next up at number nine, DigiID. So I'm a big fan of DigiID, which Digibyte implemented into its own wallet, along with support for third-party authenticators, and it's even part of the Coinomi wallet. DigiID allows you to log into websites, services, you can even integrate it with billing security and the likes by scanning a QR code and not by using a password. This allows for a much more secure authentication. AntomID have even built their platform on top of DigiID as well, and their My Digi Password is well worth checking out and is the future of password management. Next up at number eight, two for the price of one, we're doing the maximum supply and the emissions curve. So Digibyte has a thousand to one ratio of Digibyte versus Bitcoin. This was originally chosen intentionally at its creation to provide a greater ease of use and divisibility amongst the seven to eight billion people around the globe. These 21 billion Digibyte are being put into circulation over the first 21 years since Digibyte's creation in 2014. There is a small monthly reduction in the newly minted supply that comes into circulation of around about 1%. This means there's no big halving shock events like what Bitcoin has every four years. Next up, number seven, DigiShield. So another look back into history, in 2014, a lot of miners would swap between blockchains and mine different cryptocurrencies while the difficulty was low. And then as it increased and increased, they would then swap to another and swap to another and swap to another. This meant that the Digibyte blockchain at one point went for several hours between blocks. DigiShield was the solution to this. It was created to prevent that kind of thing from reoccurring and allow for a dynamic adjustment of block difficulties. Unlike Bitcoin, which takes two weeks, this now occurs every single block, effectively in real time. Then the following month after this was implemented, the Digibyte developers helped the Dogecoin developers to implement it into Dogecoin as well. DigiShield is now in a few dozen other blockchains even to this day. DigiShield has since been replaced with MultiShield, but more on that shortly. Item number six on my list is faster block timings. 10 minute settlements are cool and all, but you know what's cooler? 15 second block timings, thanks to the DigiSpeed upgrade that took place in December of 2015. Digibyte has chosen this particular number based on research from ETH Zurich in Switzerland, alongside of input from Microsoft Research Labs and their work as this is the best time to ensure propagation of blocks around the world with a proof-of-work blockchain. This allows for a greater overall capacity of processing data and transactions into the blockchain, and is just part of what keeps the transaction fees comparatively low in Digibyte. Reason number five, Digibyte's philanthropic history. So Digibyte has a bit of a bit of history with philanthropy, and it's something that got me personally quite interested in it back in 2014, when there was a joint venture between Doge and Digibyte miners to support the Washington mudslide victims. 
the way that it worked is everybody would mine for 24 hours and all of their proceeds would then be sold and donated directly to the victims of the Washington mudslides. I myself was also talking with David Hay back at the end of 2017 and early 2018 and we raised several thousand dollars from the community to send with him to Cougatar, Colombia and to distribute to wherever he felt it was most needed. This ended up actually going to predominantly an orphanage where it fed 160 children for over a month as well as over a thousand bottles of water to the Red Cross to distribute to people as they were crossing the border. Later in 2019, we also helped a village in Venezuela with rebuilding and repairing their hospital, putting on community lunches that fed thousands and more. I'll include a little bit of a link down below because a lot of people are not actually familiar with this part of Digibyte's history, and it's something that I think is actually quite important, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of this coming into the future as well. Item number four, multi-algorithm. So Digibyte was actually the first blockchain to migrate from just one single algorithm to multiple mining algorithms that secured the blockchain, and this took place in September 2014. This was based originally on Myriad Coin and Hunter Coin technology, with the algorithms being specifically chosen to allow everything from ASICs, graphics card, and CPU mining. This multi-algorithm mining was something that's been improved upon with the creation of Odocrypt as of July 2019 for FPGA mining and there has been continued effort underway to ensure the broadest distribution of possible for Digibyte by bringing back GPU and CPU mining. As such now, because Digibyte is multi-algorithm, DigiShield has since been replaced with MultiShield, a multi-algorithm difficulty retargeting. Item number three, Digibyte is permissionless. This is one of my favorite parts about it, that it means that I didn't have to ask anybody for permission to make this video or to start this YouTube channel. In fact, it actually originally started as a bit of a, a bit of a dare, I suppose, from a friend who said, maybe you should just see if you can make five videos. You're always talking about other people stepping up and doing things. Why don't you give it a try making videos? So I didn't. Here we are several hundred videos later. <laughs> if you want to support Digibyte, and make memes or make a group in your own native language, you can do it. If you want to start an awareness team like the DGBAT did, then go for it. If you want to start a foundation to support Digibyte, then the permission to do so is implied. Do you want to run your own node? There's no one who can stop you. The reason for this is because the blockchain is governed by its own internal set of rules of the node and that's basically it. Everything else is pure freedom, and I love it. Item number two on the countdown is Digibyte's continuous development. I think this is super important. Digibyte was the first major blockchain to implement segregated witness, or SegWit, back in 2017, even before Bitcoin and Litecoin did. Digibyte was the first non-Bitcoin blockchain to release a fix for the inflation bug, CVE 2018-17144 which was inherited from Bitcoin, and as such, Digibyte remained completely unaffected. We've already talked about it being the first upgrade from single to multiple mining algorithms. Then we have the fact that Digibyte actually started with a really high 60 second block timing. That was then improved to 30 seconds, and is now just a little 15 seconds, as we mentioned earlier, thanks to Digispeed. Where other projects have released their code base and then remain stagnant, Digibyte has improved and grown and improved and grown, making it a real force to be reckoned with. And number one on the list is Digibyte's worldwide adoption, and this is something that I'm so proud of the community for having a direct hand in. You see, Digibyte has one of the most active, globally active communities, and this is largely both a result of and caused by the dedication to all of the translations. The Digibyte mobile application for Android and iOS has translations for 50 plus languages. And the recently redesigned Digibyte.io website in 2020 is now available in 35 languages as well. There are a bunch of community rooms on Telegram and on Discord to suit people from all around the globe and to foster discussions in their native language too. It's my strong belief that because of this dedication, 
by the community, for the community, that we've seen Digibyte use grow around the world. Anyway, that's my top 10 reasons for why I'm excited about the future with Digibyte and what I love most about it. I'd love to hear from you as well what it is that you like the most. Perhaps you could leave them down in the comments below. Even if you don't manage to make 10, maybe just your top five reasons would be super cool as well. You can ask me any questions down there if you do like. Otherwise, you can reach me on Twitter. I'm at DGB underscore chilling. I'll talk to the next video and we'll see you soon. Cheers.